So dear respected pay, dear Sangha, dear friends, please um, close your eyes and uh, start to aware of your breathing. Feel your body alive. Breathe in. I'm aware of my in-breath. Breathe out. I'm aware of my out breath. In breath, out breath. And we listen to this out the bell. Dear respected Thay, dear brothers and sisters, dear Sangha, dear friends, thank you for coming. Um, today is the uh, 23rd of July, year 2023. We are at Dear Park Monastery for the Day of Mindfulness. And how many of you are here for the first time? That's wonderful. Half of us. First time and have always been here before. We um, just uh, finished a family retreat last month, and family retreat um, we have parents and teens and children. We practice together, and so we just finished a retreat, teen camp retreat, a family retreat about 350 people, and uh, teen camp about. Uh, 200 of us, 200, and just only teens, eight, uh, age of, um, from, eight, from uh, 13 to 17, 18. And uh, this weekend, I heard that we, we have a group of uh, Dharma Mamas, just only mother come. Uh, that's group about like 10 or 15 of them. That's so nice. And um, we, I, I asked them, I saw them this morning, I, I come to say hi to them and I asked them, uh, why is it different? Why is it different? We come just you and without your children. And some of them shout that, wow, it's very different day, very different. It's more calm. And it's a time for us to take care of ourselves, the virtue of the mother. So when I hear that, wow, that's wonderful. That's so nice that to see, to uh, hear a uh, mama, a uh, mother. She knows how to take care of herself so that she can take care of others better, take care of her own children better. And there are 
three, uh, there were three uh, uh, gentlemen, three papas, three fathers nearby, and I asked, how about you? How about we have a, a week of just only uh, Dharma dads, uh, Dharma papas? And that would be nice. We can do that for next year or maybe next season. But uh, I think it's so nice. It brings me a lot of happiness when I hear that because like, the practice is, is the way that we take care of ourselves, nourish ourselves, and um, coming back to, to know, to recognize, and to uh, uh, discover in the world, in ourselves. And as long as we know how to care ourselves, and then we can take care of others, take care of uh, our families. Mother, happy mother, happy mothers, change the world, change the uh, family, make the family happy mother, make the happy family. At the same time, happy daddy, happy papa, papa makes uh, family happy also. And uh, we have wonderful to have uh, every Sunday. Um, we have a day of mindfulness together like this. And I feel that it's, uh, in society right now, especially in, uh, out there, it's summer, very busy. Just let you know that in our monastery, summer also very busy. And uh, our culture in the U.S., uh, as, long as, uh, also, uh, as well as uh, the culture in the world, the people they want to be busy. This is my business. I need to do it. And then uh, uh, everybody looks like very busy. We run on the time. And even summer, we will have summer break, but actually we feel tired. Because the vacation makes more tired. Meditation practice, first of all, helps us to stop. Meditation, has two aspects of um, two aspects of practice. First one is uh, stopping, and second is uh, deep looking. So, some of you may come here. You ask why you come here. You can say, "I'm come here to stop," and that can be a very good answer because you come here, you do nothing, just practice. Because we come together as a Sangha, just do one thing, just practice. We, uh, you know, when you come here, you see that uh, wait for the uh, good Dharma teachers or uh, good lectures later on, you know, it's like our Dharma talks. Usually, yeah, sometimes we're just sharing about breathing, you know, very boring, sharing about our steps, walking meditation, repeat again and again. And then maybe you think you know about that. And then mindfulness, oh, I know about that. You can read uh, books, you can Google it, you know. But practice, you cannot get from the books. You need to get down into your practice. Look like this morning, you need to experience your steps. Walking meditation is the way that for you to stop. Uh, there is one... Um, uh, one story that I want to share with you. I like this story. Somehow very simple, but I know that you know this story, but I keep telling you about the horse and the man. In the Buddha time, okay, there was a man, let's say very handsome, let's say very uh, strong, and he's rich, right? He, he, he's on the horse. He, he's riding a horse. He's, he's riding a horse, okay? He was riding a horse. And the horse runs very fast. And there was another man stand by on the road and he asked, Hey, my dear friends, where are you going? Why are you go so fast? And the man on the horse said, that, I don't know. Ask the horse. It look, look like very simple, right? The story is just like that. And actually our life like that. The horse is yourself. And the man also yourself. The man is ourself, our body, you are here, here, and the horse is your habit energy. 
your running minds, your running thoughts. You think that the whole life you need to do those things, and then you feel happy. And you run in these things, after these things. This is my business. I need to take care. I need to finish. But when you finish the business, you have another business, business, business. And then at the end of your life, do I live my life? And then you already sick. You already getting old. So uh, these stories, um, the Buddha tell us about like uh, practice meditation. First of all, you need to recognize your mind. Okay, recognize your body. Practice in such a way that you can stop the habit energy of running. But how can you do that? How? Walking meditation is the way you can stop your running. You see, we walk very beautifully, every step, and you feel more the earth. And then you feel arrived every step, and then you can stop your running mind. You feel so okay. I feel so wonderful to walk in like that. And the community helps you to do also. And the body do the same. And that you feel wonderful. Thank you, Sangha. Please smile in. Anybody smile? That's good. I, I, I want to smile, but sometimes uh, just let you know that, uh, you know, last week, Sita Aung Yim, she, uh, she shared very beautiful uh, with her English. I also have a complexes about my English. So my English is second language, okay? I go to France and go to America. That's why I learn English. Okay, so sometimes uh, I, I talk, I talk and speak some in a way that not uh, according to the grammar, or maybe you shouldn't tell, you shouldn't say like that in your uh, in America. So you tell me, okay? <laughs> so practice meditation. First of all, we learn how to stop. So today we will learn how to to stop. The second is deep looking. So um, our teacher, um, Thay, he wrote about 14 verses. On meditation, on stopping and deep looking. So the first one like this. Just as a bird has two wings, okay? Practice of meditation has stopping and deep looking. Two, the two wings depends on each other. Stopping and deep looking go together. So stopping and deep looking look like two wings of the bird. That can help us to fly up very far. Fly up the space of freedom and healing and transformation. So uh, a lot of tradition that uh, empathize uh, more about deep looking, like Vipassana, uh, and this one is like uh, sam samatha. So stopping is samatha, right? Chi. And deep looking is vipassana. So a lot of tradition just uh, empathize about deep looking, but forget about stop, stopping. So Thay, our teacher, said that both of them are equally important. But first of all, we need to learn how to stop. So during the walking meditation, we learn how to stop, right? You walk every step, and you focus on your breathing, and focus on your breath, and your steps and you feel you are here, you are alive in the present moment. And then you, need to, you don't think about the other thing else. You feel you are on the earth. You feel your steps. You follow your breathing. And that helps you to stop and help you to calm down your, your thoughts and your running mind. And also, 
as long as we stop, we can help ourselves to uh, to rest. You know, we, uh, we have a restlessness in our body, in our mind. And sometimes like, we, we always think about, okay, I need to go there, I need to do that, I need to finish that, I need to, uh, to do this, you know, in order to be happy. And then the body like, always wants to do something. In meditation, sit there, do nothing. And that is challenging. In Vietnamese, we call the nhang cư vi bất thiện. We call that sometimes you have too much time, and then you do nothing. You sit there is evil. Sometimes uh, in Vietnamese we say like that. We say that we need to do something. We need to get rich. We need to have fame and power. And then your thinking always go on in science they recognize that every human's brain produced at least uh, 50,000 thoughts per day. Too much. Right? So the thoughts like that is your host. Practice meditation helps yourself to stop the host and recognize you are alive. Walking meditation, sitting meditation, you sit still and you help yourself to recognize the host in your in yourself. And why you can do like that? Because stopping means to be still. So this is the second verse of the 14 verses of Thai teaching on meditation, stopping and looking. Stopping means to be still in order to recognize, to be in contact, to nourish, to heal, to calm, and to focus the mind. Again, stopping means to be still, in order to recognize, to be in contact, to nourish, to heal, to calm, and to focus the mind. You know, sometimes we uh, worry something, and then we hurry something, and you come to monastery, and you hear the, the bell, bong, and you see other body do the same, like a stop, and they follow their in breath and out breath. So when you come up to the dining hall, you can do like this. You can hear the bell, right? The charming on the clock. Our tradition is when you hear the bell, we stop whatever we are doing. And just the moment three breaths that you stop offers space for you to check in. Mm -hmm, where's my mind? Where's I'm feeling now? Within with a, wow, why I'm so hurry? I'm alive, it's okay. So sometimes uh, we, we do walking meditation, we uh, mop, <laughs> we mop and then we do the, uh, uh, clean the, the table and then we get you. We're like, oh no, we should do that, no. no. It's okay, no, no, put the chair on the top. No, 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 I think it's okay, we just mop. And then, bong. And the body stop and follow their breathing. And I look like we do the same. And we, we check in, we don't need to argue, we don't need to, we don't need to like <sighs> stir up the togetherness uh, with like a lot of talking like that. And we recognize that, where's my mind? We recognize that, where's your mind? Where's the thoughts? Are you aware that like, you are working mindfully? Are you aware that we just do working? Is it a way that just for work, don't need to finish, don't need to be done, don't need to be perfect? So in our monastery, stopping is not only sit there and stop. During the time you do walking meditation, you hear the bell, listen to the bell, opportunity to stop. The walking meditation, opportunity for you to stop. Eating meditation at lunch, 
you enjoy it in meditation. You can opportunity to stop. And stop here is, again, I want to write out this one, burning horse. It's a habit energy, right? How can we write habit energy? Like this. Energy of running. And the second is a radio, what? Pay our teacher. Said about like radio N S T. Non stop thinking. So this is a radio. So when we do it in meditation, one year they, uh, they suggest that before we do it in meditation, we need to read this. Radio and SD, non-stop thinking. We have that in our human mind, non-stop thinking. So when you eat, you suppose to turn off that radio. Within, hey radio, please, I turn you off, okay? I just feel hungry, I just feel the friends around me, I just feel the food in front of me. I suppose to eat in mindfulness. I suppose to eat with awareness, okay? Don't need to think. So I turn off, click, turn off. In order to turn off, you need to, uh, you need to practice, uh, follow your breathing, right? So uh, this is uh, four exercises of, um, of the discourse sutras on mindful, full, aware, full awareness of breathing. I want to show you. That is the taught us that we can practice anywhere, anytime. First of all, first exercise, recognize in-breath and out-breath. Breathing in, I know this is my in-breath. Breathe out, I know this is my out-breath. So you sit there and you follow your breathing, or you recognize your breathing, right? And you feel you are here. I don't need to do anything. But is that evil that I don't do anything? No. I don't need to do anything because I want to take care of myself. Okay? I want to follow my breathing so that I take care of the nature of mama. I want to breathe mindfully so that I don't have that worries. I don't have that kind of anxieties, anger, fear. So that is kind of tension, stress in me. So when you follow your, your recognize your in-breath, out-breath, and that's why you, you can bring yourself the feeling of stillness in your body and your mind, okay? And after that, the second, follow your in-breath and out-breath. You continue to follow your breathing from the beginning to the end. Within it, I follow my in-breath, from beginning to the end, okay? And breathe out, I follow my out breath from beginning to the end. And I don't need to focus anything else. So this is the thing that we can, uh, we call the, um, we call the energy of mindfulness, this one. You already know that's one, huh? Your mind comes to the present moment. Your mind come back to the present moment to just enjoy your in-breath and follow your in-breath. And when you have a mindfulness, and the concentration will be arise. So you focus on your in-breath and out-breath only. You don't need to focus anything else. And when you do like this, you already have Opportunity to stop radio of NSD already. You see? You forget this, and then you don't allow your thoughts running again and again. And when you do this, you can rest. So when you listen to the bell, can you feel it? Feel uh, your breathing? Breathing. I'm aware of my in-breath. Without, I'm aware of my out-breath.
I think the nature of our um, the nature of our human uh, mind always searching out itself, right? And uh, we always want to search something that fulfilled your heart, fulfilled your mind, fulfilled yourself that you feel not good enough. But animals, they do different. When they have wounds, when they get wounded, when they feel tired, and what they do is just, just stop, chasing for food, searching for anything. Go to the forest, find a quiet place, and lie down to heal. So the resting, actually the nature of the, the animals, they know better than us. We don't know how to rest. Do you know your... Do you know you can rest when you feel tired? The summer is summer break is supposed to rest, but after a while, the summer feel more tired. Our monastery have a day of Sunday like this practice, right? We follow within is my favorite days, by the way, because this day I don't need to do meeting. And this day, I don't need to do organizing. These days, I don't need to do planning. I just enjoy Sangha schedule and practice, right? To let go, practice with every step and every breath. And another day is, I also love it, it's lazy day. And after today, Monday. So in our culture, we have like uh, Sunday is uh, like a uh, weekend, right? So you plan to go. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you go somewhere else to play something, and Monday, feel tired, go to the, the work. That's why you feel Monday, ah, oh, you think Monday like a stressful day. But some of you are very smart, like you choose to come here Sunday to practice with us. That is wonderful. So, the, about the resting. Animals know how to rest, and then we know that we, as long as you know how to stop, follow our breathing, and then you know, is there is something you. The, the next exercise is aware of your body. Okay, within I'm aware of my body. Is there any tension in my body? I feel so stressful. Any tension in the body? You feel your body in pain, aches. And then breathe out as much in my body. Right? So this is the third exercise. And the fourth exercise is calm your body. Breathing in, I calm my whole body. Breathing out, I release tensions from my body. You know what? This is my favorite practice and my favorite sutras that I practice for myself. And you know what? When is I ap apply this the most? During my Qigong time. I do Qigong exercise. I apply this all the time. So when I put yeah, my hands like this, within I feel my body, my heart. Without, I smudge my heart. Within, I feel my breathing with my low abdomen. Without, I relax my low abdomen. You see? So every, every time that you can practice, you bring awareness to your body. And as long as you bring awareness to your body like this, and you can calm your body like this, and that is bring the, you know what? Bring the ease. Bring ease. And this is the element the elements, one of the seven factors of awakening. So before you want to get enlightened, you need to have ease in the body and mind. If you have too much stress, I bet you, you can awake and you can uh, uh, get enlightened. You get crazy after that. You got too much stress in the body and the mind. And you don't have concentration. And then how can you have insight? So when you, have, you calm the body and the ease can happen, and that's why I have you to rest. And then you have a chance to heal. 
that the animals, when they lie down, rest, and naturally they can heal themselves. But sometimes we, uh, we see that it's our habit energy is too strong. Our habit energy is too strong. I don't know how to heal too strong. And uh, we stop for a while and then come back again and again and again and then the heavy energy come back again. And then you need to practice, come back to practice again and again. You do city meditation every day. You do walking meditation every day to recognize what it is. And sometimes uh, Yeah, I feel like uh, sometimes we need to look deeply into ourselves. That's why we come to the second uh, aspect of meditation. The heavy energy and the wounds inside the cell too deep. So we need to look deeply into it. Right? But before you look deeply, you need to calm your body. And actually, this calm body, you can apply for calming your feelings. So this one, sometimes you have uh, wounds in the body in your mind, right? So the deep looking Thay wrote like this, the, the number three of the 14 verses of meditation. Deep looking means to regard in depth the true nature of five aggregates. So that understand may arise to transform all grief and pain. Again, deep looking means to regard in depth the true nature of five skandhas or aggregates. So you can deep looking uh, into your wounds, your five uh, skandhas, five aggregates. You know five skandhas is uh, body, and then feelings, perception, mental formation, and consciousness. So uh, today I just uh, talk about the body because I love to do this practice. It's easy to start with the body. And uh, later on, I will add a little bit about emotions and something about the, the wounds. The fourth one, the breath and the footsteps generate the source of mindfulness, which enable us to recognize to be in touch with the wonders of life. You know, I just shared it earlier, that is uh, the breath and the footsteps that you do walk in meditation, right? Generate the source of mindfulness. Mindfulness here. When you come back to your steps and your breathing, you can recognize that is you are alive, okay? That is uh, generate, generate the source of happiness, source of mindfulness, which enables to recognize. Okay, so this is uh, something that is I want to share. Recognize. Okay, first of all, you recognize what is there. Recognize that your wounds are still very deep in your, in your mind. The anger is still very uh, big in your mind. Recognize your feelings right now. As long as you come back to your breathing and you're aware about your body and you recognize what is going on, right? And from recognize, in the present moment, are you feeling sad right now? Are you feeling okay right now? Someone have a struggling uh, today when I asked like uh, Sister Hương Nghiêm, and I asked her, Sister Hương Nghiêm, how are you? And they said that, don't ask like that. And why? And he said that, I learned English, said that, you know, that question not supposed to ask in the US. And I don't know why. And uh, I think I, I know what she means, you know. It's like, that question is also very sensitive. So that you ask and you just say, oh, I'm fine, I'm good. But actually deep in, in yourself, there is something going on. How are you, you know? Simple, but something like we, uh, our life, you know, you're making up like 
uh, how are you? Is how are you with the body, also the mind? How are you feeling today? So whatever is happening in your mind and your body, you accept the second. The first of all, you recognize what it is. Accept. Within, I recognize that is fear in me. The wounds in me. Without, I smile to it. I accept it's okay to have that kind of feeling. It's okay. I just say I'm not good today. I feel bad. Just let you know I feel not good today. Can I not go in the meeting? You see? That's kind of answer. But we always say that I'm good, I'm fine. I, I'm not good today. I feel bad today. I need to take care of myself. Okay? Can we have a, have a courage to say like that? To, to be true to yourself. So meditation, deep looking is mean we need to start by recognize what is there. In order to do this, you need to follow your breathing and you smile to what is happening and accept. And after you accept, and you embrace. Embrace air. Embrace like this? Okay. Embrace. You know, embrace is, uh, yeah, is, is very, uh, it looks like uh, they, our teacher said that is, there is a wounded child in your heart, in your mind, like a baby crying. And when she's crying, you asking, she's asking for help, and you just embrace her without any talking. Just breathe with her and embrace it. And how can you embrace? You, you, you use this energy, your mindfulness. And you use your calmness, right? You use the energy of mindfulness. And mindfulness concerning, concerning awareness, concerning about uh, acceptance already. And you embrace with that energy and breathe in and out and smiling with that, it's okay. And then you have a chance to look deep into it. Look deep into it. And then we, when you deep looking like this, it means the process every day. It's not like uh, one uh, minute, five minutes, you can do that. During the time of walking meditation, have opportunity to have uh, one, two, three drops of the water. You drop into recognize. You accept yourself a little bit, you see? And you can have a little bit to look deeply into yourself. And do city meditation every day, you have a time to look deeply into yourself. So every day, every day becomes a habit. The practice is to come back to yourself, to recognize what it is and take care of what's going on here. Otherwise, you blame someone else out there. It's not our way to do that. Okay, check in. Anybody understand my English? Good? Oh, wonderful. Let us offer a smile so that I feel good. I want to uh, tell you a story that I feel very bad. Um, usually, I, I grew up in Vietnam, but I'm, I'm not, not the one that is open up. I'm very uh, afraid to the public. And when I make, make some mistakes, I suffer for a long time. So one day, uh, during the US tour 2011, I make the big mistakes. You know, I don't know that you know that, but. I make the big mistakes ever in my monastic life, okay? You know, we know about stopping. I don't practice stopping in that time. You know about the breathing. I don't practice breathing in that time. So one day, 2011, the tour after six years or seven years, I didn't see my brothers for a long time, right? So the tour come together from brothers, from friends, from America, from Vietnam, from Thailand. We come together. So in that time, I come up to the uh, second level, my room down here, and Tae's room up here, okay? And then I go to the second level to see my brothers on the right, and then I spend one hour there talking, and we uh, exchange the photos and pictures. So somehow, uh, my brother said that, Mante, can you just go to your room to get the hard drive? I, we need to exchange this, because it's uh, important in the temple, you know? 
So I, feel so, I felt so excited. <laughs> I feel so excited. So I remember I go uh, up, right? I turn right to my room. So I uh, turn right to my brother's room. So I remember I just go out and turn left in my room. But I don't go down there. I just turn left and I go and I ran. I don't walk in like this, okay? I don't follow my breathing. I ran and I open the door, boom. And I see my room stays in my room. And then the attendant's in my room. And I, I worry about, and I open the room, boom, like this, I see. You know what, I, what my, my head, my, my face get red. And I shake my body like this. And you know what moment they react to me? They're like, hey, my child. <laughs> Hello, Kong. Father Joy Kong. He just say that, hello, my child, please come here to play with me. It's like, you know, it's like, yeah, I cannot, uh, you know, this room is very like, you see energy, right? Uh, and open the door without knocking, I'm supposed to knock the door. But I believe that this is my room. Why they go to my room, you know? And they on the homework. So in one minute, I realized that is, uh, they, why they, you go to my room? And then why is attendance in here? What happening? But later on, I feel like, oh no, I did a mis I, I make a mistake. I go to Tai room. I feel so bad and I almost cry and shake like this in my head, my face red. You know what they do for me? He embraced my fear and he knows that I need this. He's just holding my hand. He said that, my dear, come. I hold my hand like this. And then both of us breathe in and out for two minutes without talking. Oh my gosh, more scared. <laughs> no, it's like holding my hand. And then my hand's still shaking and holding my hand. And I know that uh, they tell me in silence that breathe my day is okay. And after that, he showed me like, uh, you know, your homework, you can uh, swing homework for me. And then he start the conversation about asking about root temple. Because the one that I care for and he also care for, he asked God, oh, how is the brother's root temple gone? You know, something. And the conversation go on for one hour. So it's like, uh, it's wonderful. And I realized, I realized that it's the uh, energy of embracing, embracing my fear and my, uh, my bad feeling. And you know, the way he embraced like this, it's like calming my body and my mind. I don't feel bad anymore. The compassion, compassion. When you embrace with love and compassion, everything is possible to heal, okay? Compassion, something. Something which you have a time to stop and listen to it and embrace it. And from here, you deep looking like, where it come from? Where we act like that? And this one also can lead into the healing. Okay? So deep looking can give the insight and the understanding. And understanding can give to the understanding, give to the transformation and healing. And, uh, and after that day, I think uh, I practice knock the door the best. Even I go to my door and go to the bathroom, knock. <laughs> I never forget. After that, I just do like this. And, uh, and uh, yeah, anyway, so after one hour, I uh, come back to my room, get the driver and go to my brother's room and say, why you go for one hour? Uh, I have some incident I don't want to share with you, but uh, sorry. You know, that is the thing. Um, so, so this is, I want to share with you the, um, the practice that uh, I think most of us struggling a lot. Um, so every day you, uh, you have body, right? They said that as long as you have body, you can practice.
So we'll listen to one side of the bell. Maybe I need a few more minutes. I will share with you my inside gata. You know, in our day, uh, he shared with us, like um, sometimes we see that is uh, our work, our business is the most important. And and he said that everybody we see that time is money. But he shared another thing is also work and life. We need to balance. You work for what? You work and you do business in order to, to survive, to be happy. To have money for what? To live. To have a lot of money, a lot of fame, a lot of power. You put that in the pocket, that is, does not mean anything. So you work, but the work is one thing, life another thing. When you work and you don't live your life, and that is really different. That is really, uh, so time is money, but it's not the money at all compared to life. If you're on the sick bed, uh, on the uh, sick bed, and about, uh, the doctor said that you have uh, three days to live. Money does not do anything for you. But breathing maybe helps. Feel your body in that moment. Be each other for, uh, be one for another in your family. To there, to live there for them. I'm here for you in that moment. More important. So they said that it's work, life. We need to balance both of them. If you work, but that work don't, don't bring anything about your life, don't do it. We do organizing retreat. But that retreat for us also, yes, we do it. But we organize a retreat and we have a stress, a lot of suffering. We don't have fatherhood anymore. And that retreat for somewhere else, not for us, don't organize a retreat. So organizing retreat is for us also. The retreat for us, and for you, and we work together. And when you notice you, and we feel more happy, and we feel more, our heart bigger, open more, and I feel this retreat, even thousand retreats, I can accept it. I don't feel tired. You see? So the work and life is together. It's not separate. So we do the work, but we, we go to the office. You can apply walker meditation, you see? So you feel, I go to the office with joy and happiness. You walk every step. So 2012, uh, I think early 2012, I received lamb from, from Faye. And, um, and I think uh, I support to, uh, in that moment, I also wrote the uh, inside gata. And uh, I, not, I, was not, uh, I wasn't the one that wrote the, the poem very well in that time and the gata very well. So I, I wrote two, uh, like uh, two poems, right? Two gata. So the, this is the second part. The second part of the gata I want to read with you in Vietnamese. And I asked, the, I asked the Google on to translate for me. So I read in Vietnamese first. Hơi thở là sự sống, bước chân là con đường đem thân tâm trở về thành thơi giữa quê hương. My breath is my life. Footsteps are the path. Bringing body and mind back together. I'm free and at peace in my true home. 
So I wrote this gatha because in that time I struggled about should I go back to root temple or stay in here. And I feel like uh, I want to have something where I can do it, and I don't feel the future is like I need to do that and then go to the future like this, like this. And I just uh, I also love my brothers, and then they have struggling together at home in Vietnam. So I feel like uh, uh, it's very hard actually in that time. And I feel like uh, my practice, I feel sometimes have a lot of uh, inferior jump complex with my body and my, my life also. I, I grew up with a lot of bullied uh, by the people. Like, uh, you know, it's like since like as a child, when I go to the temple, become the monastery too, people say, oh, you small, short, yeah, you do like this, that. And water a lot of bad seeds on me. And then I don't feel confident enough what I've been doing. So my breath is my life. As long as I have breath, it's okay. I build up my life. And when my breath with a lot of calm, my life with a lot of calm. With my breath, fear short, and my life, fear, anxieties. So as long as I take care of my breath, my breath with a lot of love, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, mindfulness, concentration and insights. Yeah, my life, energy of mindfulness, concentration and insights. And my footsteps, walking, take care of my footsteps. As long as your footsteps and you walk on the path, and that path will be a wonderful path for you. So, uh, you know, uh, sometimes the Lee said that is the path like this, but you don't walk on it and become what? Wow, a lot of grass come up, right? So you need to have mindful footsteps on it. And that path contains mindfulness and mindful steps. So I see, how can I write? In this time, I practice this, so I just write down this gata. I embrace, like, and then when I, as long as I, I bring my body and mind together, I feel it's okay. Accept who I am. This body is okay like this. Okay? It's okay for the mind wave. It's okay for the inside. You root qigong and you feel your father in your body. Your father never died. Even my father died four years ago. Uh, who's, who, I, I love, he's my hero. Just like, you know, without him, I cannot become young monk. So the way I talk like this, very, very much my father. So I never forget the moment that I do Qigong with him during the time that we are uh, healing together when he, uh, he was very sick with a lung cancer. We do Qigong every day and we sit, we uh, have a tea, something like that. And the last breath that he released on the bed, I was there. I practiced with him. So I promised with him, like, uh, Daddy, what you cannot do, I do for you. I bring you to here. I'm your continuation, okay? So you not die. I remember that conversation with him. So that gives me the energy. So when I bring my body and my back together, I'm free and at peace enough in my true home. My true home is in here in the present moment. They said that Vietnam is not only uh, over there, your home is not over there. Root Temple is not over there. But Root Temple or Vietnam or your home is where you are right now, right here. If you see you have love for that, you really be present for yourself, you accept yourself, your ancestor is here already. So I don't talk that this is because I abandoned over there. No, but I mean, that moment, I feel very confused. That's why it's the time to come back to the care, come back home here to practice. So that's why I write out <laughs> my gata. Um, this one is containing taste practice in it because I practice for a long time. But uh, I think this is, uh, this is my inside gata I want to share with you. That is uh, conclude my sharing today. And uh, also uh, thank you for coming and um, I think we can organize your day in such a way that today is a day of mindfulness, right? 
Maybe tomorrow you can have a lazy day for yourself also. If you cannot do it, you have lazy day on Saturday or have lazy day on Friday when you come back home. Because for me, like uh, lazy day is the, the day also for me to stop and to heal without sangha activities. And then Sunday is the, the time for me to stop and heal with community, with the whole community. And Sunday is I do also my own schedule to really come back to my inner world, to offer space for myself. So thank you for coming, and hopefully you enjoy the day together with us. And I think we have a time for Dharma sharing after this. So uh, please uh, also open the heart to share also about your life, how to stop, how to rest, how to heal uh, yourself and your family, especially in the summer. Thank you for your listening. We will sit beautifully and listen to three sounds of the bell. <laughs>